Hello readers, it's Miss T. Thank you again for joining me for a read aloud. Today during story time, we're going to read Teo's Tutu. Teo's Tutu is written by Marianne Jacob Macias and illustrated by Aaliyah Marley. Something that I want you to think about while we read is what you can do during the book. Some readers actually dramatize the story while they're reading. So you might decide to get maybe another family member or a friend to actually read the story while you act it out. Let's get started. Teo's Tutu. Oh, I see a tutu here and some ballet slippers. Teo entered his first day of ballet class holding Amma's and Poppy's hands. These were the hands that twirled him during the cumbia and waved to the bongra beat when they all danced at home. But ballet was nothing like cumbia or bongra. If you're not sure how to do these dances, I actually put videos of them in the description so you can learn how to do them with Teo. Let's keep reading. As Teo peeked inside the studio, his stomach felt topsy-turvy. Hmm, what do you think that means? Maybe a little nervous, a little anxious or worried? Alma kissed him on the forehead. Just enjoy dancing like we do at home. Remember how excited you were when we saw Swan Lake, Poppy asked? Teo nodded, picturing the arch of the dancers' feet in releve, their split straight legs as they leaped through the air, and their perfect pirouettes. They seemed so free, floating across the stage, their costumes gleaming under the bright lights. Some of you might want to try to do some of these moves right now. Getting on your tippy toes, leaping across the room, doing some points with your toes. Miss Lila patted the spot on the floor next to her. Pat, pat, Teo sat down. Finn pointed to Teo's tutu. Why are you wearing that? Because it's pretty, Teo replied. Miss Lila smiled. I wish I had a tutu like that. Do any of you have tutus at home? Maybe you have one like Teo or a little different. Maybe you like to wear pants or a shirt. Tinkling piano notes filled the studio as the class stretched their arms up and side to side. They touched their toes and made butterfly wings with their legs. Teo never knew he was so flexible. Can you try one of these moves? I really like this one. The one where you have the butterfly wings and you make your knees go up and down. You can also stretch and see how flexible you are trying to touch your toes. I'm not as flexible as Teo. He raised his hand. When do we split in the air? It takes a lot of practice to perform de grand jeté, Miss Lila answered. First, we have to learn the basic positions. Miss Lila demonstrated first through fifth position. Some of you are noticing there are five, if you count them, starting at the top, one, two, three, four, five. So this is first position. See if you can do that and see how Teo's toes are. Then try second position with your arms out, third position, fourth position, and fifth position. Some of this footwork looks a little tricky. He knew these were small but important steps and he wanted to get them just right. Each week in class, Teo learned new movements. He loved how his ballet slippers hugged his feet like vines coiled around a tree and the way his tutu swayed like the autumn breeze. It's very poetic. It's a great description. He couldn't wait to perform on stage under the lights in a fancy costume before a real audience. 
so you can see he's imagining what he might look like. At home, Teo practiced. His arms and legs were ocean waves flowing. The music was the current guiding him. Soon he could stand on his tiptoes in releve. Can you try that, standing on your tiptoes like Teo? But arabesque was so hard. He kept losing his balance. Is it okay if you try and make a mistake? Yeah. If you make a mistake, it actually means that you're getting smarter because you learn from your mistake. I bet Teo's going to get even better when he practices. One day, Miss Lila had an announcement. Our costumes for the recital have arrived. The class waited excitedly for her to open the box. Small packages of sparkly lavender skirted leotards and silver shirts with black pants emerged. Please choose the costume you'd like to perform in, Miss Lila said. Go ahead and take a look and think about which costume you would want. Now think about which one you think Teo will choose. Teo knew which costume he wanted to wear. The tutu reminded him of the peonies outside the conservatory where he saw Swan Lake with their layers and layers of petals. As he grabbed his leotard, Teo felt everyone's eyes on him. This wasn't the kind of audience he wanted. What does that mean? Hmm. Some of you are remembering this page. Remember he was so excited to be on stage? And I think that he felt that on stage here, the audience would cheer for him and he's so happy. But over here, you notice that some of the kids are looking and laughing at him. That's not the kind of audience he wants. He wants people to be proud of him and think that he looks great on stage. Slowly, he picked up the shirt and pants and placed both costumes in his bag. Why do you think he took the pants and the shirt as well? That night, Teo pulled on the black pants. They were so plain. The silver shirt was shiny, but it didn't sparkle. Teo felt stiff as if he couldn't get his leg high enough for a proper arabesque. Looks like they don't really fit in a way that makes him feel comfortable enough to dance. Next, Teo tried on the leotard. It was soft and stretchy. The tutu fluffed out around him like a cloud as he rehearsed the recital routine. This must be how the Swan Lake dancers felt. Teo loved who he saw in the mirror. But what if the audience didn't love him back? I bet he's thinking about the kids that were laughing at him. I wonder if he's worried about if people will laugh at him when he goes on the stage in a tutu. Amma peeked in. Dinner's almost ready. Just then, Teo heard his family's favorite playlist. The shaking of maracas got louder as he went downstairs. You're ready for the stage, Poppy beamed. He took Teo's hands and they two-stepped the cumbia forward and back. Afterward, the boom of the bangra dole echoed throughout the apartment as they all bounced and pumped their hands in the air. They held hands and danced until dinner time. When Teo arrived at the recital the next day, he slowly approached his class backstage, then paused. His stomach did fouettes. Fouettes are actually a ballet term when you spin around and around, so his stomach is kind of churning around and around. And you think, yes, he's probably feeling nervous. Amma knelt down. These are the ways we must be brave sometimes. Poppy put his arms round Teo. Tu eres valiente. That means you are brave. Teo pictured himself at home dancing with Amma and Poppy. In his head, he heard the doll drum as they danced bhangra. He imagined the way his hips shook like maracas when they danced the cumbia. He remembered the Swan Lake dancers gliding from one end of the stage to the other. Most of all, Teo thought about how much he loved to dance. 
Miss Lila gathered her dancers. You look perfect, she said. They walked onto the dark stage together, hands clasped. When the curtain opened, Heo's arms and legs knew just what to do. He fluttered around the stage, his costume twinkling under the warm lights. His arabesque was poised and balanced. The music stopped. The audience was on its feet cheering. Teo's heart felt bigger than his whole body. He beamed out at his mom and dad, his biggest fans. Readers, thank you for joining me today to read Teo's Tutu. Again, I hope that you had some fun trying the moves that Teo was doing. And if you'd like to learn more about how to do these dance moves, or even about the music that he's talking about, you can get onto the description box below and I've put a few other YouTube videos that are short videos of kids trying some of these moves and dancing the bhangra and the cumbia. So friends, I hope you had a great time, keep learning more, and I'll see you next time for story time.